Hey, there you are. Guess what? We're building a snow fort palace. I recruited some help. We had to cover it with a tarp the other day because it was raining so much. But now it's cold again, it's snowing, and it's time to build the Igloo Mansion. Let's do this. Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery of Mischief. Whoa. <laughs> Think of my hat. Find it on FowlersMakerMischief.com. Oh, you did grab one. Why don't you? Why don't we try your ice auger? The ice auger? Yeah. What, like to drill in there? And yeah, it'd be just <laughs> instead of shoveling. All right, go grab it. All right. This thing's all big. Yeah. I, I sat on it. All. I sat on it as a seat, like I was sitting on it and I was fishing like this, and the handle bent. So I like it though, because it takes up less room in my car and sled. So it's, it's snub nose. Yeah, the only thing is, like, how do you hold it? Because it's like. Get it in there, hold it still. It crawls down, it's not that hard. Like the snow. Yeah, that doesn't work. Ah, that was a good idea. You know what's nice about this snow fort is it's so big, a lot of them I've done, you're going through a hole that's like the size of your body. And it takes forever. Nah, it's not snowing as hard anymore. Noah, can you find one of the saws? Um, we need to cut some sticks. So we can poke them through the side and see how far we have to go when we're digging. Okay. A little, a little slow going until we get enough room in here for everybody to get in. Or at least a couple more people. Alright, please state your name and your position at Fowler's Maker and Mischief. Uh, my name is Noah Thompson. I am the operations and logistics manager. I'm Jonathan Parker, head of security. Also a uh, carpenter. I fix things around the house. My name is Aiden James Rustine. I edit the TikToks. That's about it. Name's Matthew Ralph Theobald. Editor of the videos. Uh, designer of the thumbnails. Wow. Uh, I'm Zachary Fowler, uh, owner, operator, uh, Creator of Fowler's Makery Mischief on YouTube and now Fowler's Makery Mischief Inc. I guess. Three days ago, we spent quite a few hours digging. I did pretty much most of the shoveling, you know, not to, not to brag, but just a shovel master. Do you feel like you've been a help or a hindrance to the building of this ice fort? Um, I pulled the sled a lot. I'm usually coming to work unprepared for the weather, so what? I never have gloves or hats, so I haven't really done much of the um, actual physical labor. It's a small pool of people, small gene pool of people to draw from here in Maine, so you, you get what you get. Did they just break through? Oh, no, okay, everybody's okay. I thought they went broke through. Zach knows exactly what he's doing. I've never seen a project that he's worked on fail. Thanks, Dick. I think staying here overnight's gonna be 
uncomfortable at best. As long as I do the final cut, uh, everything will always be okay. So, you know, you gotta know how far you can trust your people to go and then you, uh, uh, you take over. That's, how, that's what being a good boss is all about. I've been working here six months and like he hasn't paid me yet. So that's tough, but I don't know. Um, there's some confusion. Allegedly, he's my dad. I don't think he knows that yet. I don't think I'm gonna tell him. I mean, I'm just gonna. I gotta. But you know, it does suck not getting paid. But I do get some bonding time with my potential father, so that's nice. Just getting some sticks cut so that we can stick them in, and they'll go on the outside. And once we see a stick from the inside, we'll know that we've got the right depth, and we need to stop digging. No, I just guesstimated. That's only 10 inches. No, it's not. I'm a ways off, it's hard to say. <laughs> can see a foot from a mile away. Come here, butter. What are you doing? Oh my <laughs> goodness. She just went up on top. <laughs> Good girl. How did you do that? These sticks are too flimsy. Jonathan in there burrowing away like a badger with the cold steel shovel. Oh my goodness! Holy! Oh, what did you eat? Pizza. Jonathan, it's only been about 20 minutes since we had pizza, so I, that, there's no reason. <laughs> did we hit a septic line? This is not a safe work environment. Someone call OSHA. Yeah. Problematic. Look at my charcoal filters. Butter. Butter. <laughs> She's trying to pull the sticks out of the top. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Here you go. Oh, get it. <laughs> Slide in there, Butter. I dare you. Butter. If we pile it all up right there, then we maybe can make a little sliding hill. Oh, yeah. If you stab these in here and then you pull them like you get big chunks off a hole. That's what I was hoping for. Are you going in, butter? What do you think? What do you think? Isn't it awesome? Just the two. Alright, I need a shovel. There you go. Butter's playing fetch with the snowballs. <laughs> butter! Oh. Zach, can I drill through the chimney so you got a reference hole? No! You said go? Just do it slow. The one rule of snow forts is you don't climb on top. That's why I wanted to do it now. No, because I'm not drilling through. I'm just going to shove the chimney pipe down through. Okay. Before we go much further, today's video is brought to you by Dr. Squatch. That felt good. Dr. Squatch has sponsored us a few times in the past, and like the last one with the hot tub, I got a little carried away with the video. I just love the scent of this. And I feel like that takes away from the true story behind Dr. Squatch and what it really means to me. So I thought we'd pull back the curtain and I show you what's actually going on in my shower. I get pretty sweaty, pretty dirty, sometimes really fishy when I'm lobster and things like that. And to be able to come home to a good soap is never been a big value of mine until I found Dr. Squatch. In the last two years, it's been a, the only thing in my shower outside of, well, dog shampoo. <laughs> pine tar soap, uh, pine tar conditioner I like to use in my beard, and the citrus conditioner I like to use in my hair. My daughter also uses this because mainstream soaps use so many chemicals and things, she gets all dandruffy. The only other solution seems to be apple cider vinegar so her head isn't itchy and an annoyed kid is an annoyed parent. When it comes to the soaps, Dr. Squatch soap for the win. I love the way it lathers up. I love the way it makes my skin feel. And when I get out of the shower, I don't have to like go and find some other sort of lotion or something. My skin doesn't get dry and flaky. This stuff really works. And here's the evidence for it. One, two slivers of soap that are still in here. And if you look into the corner of my shower, there's 
I'm, I'm not maybe the cleanliest shower cleaning person. Uh, there's still a couple more slivers of soap here. All right, so in my bathroom sink area is the rest of my kit. Uh, I have the deodorant. This one here, the uh, Birch Breeze one. It works so good, it smells so good. As well as the deodorant here, I actually have a bar of soap in here. Now this is for washing your body. Sometimes I have to run in the house and I gotta be somewhere else and I take this and I wash up with it. This was the, uh, this is the Grapefruit IPA. I love that one for my hands. All right, this feels a little bit silly talking about what I have in my bathroom with you guys instead of doing some fancy sponsored video with all kinds of silliness. But what I want you guys to take away from this more than anything else is that this is for real. This is the stuff that I live to, to shower for. Like, I, I love this stuff. New customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more with the code DSQFOWL. Check out the link in the description below. Give Dr. Squatch a try. You won't regret it. And before too long, you'll be hauling everything out of your shower and replacing it all with Dr. Squatch stuff. They have a prescription. Uh, uh, they have a prescription. You can get a prescription for Dr. Squatch if you want. So you can get a subscription by going to their website or order stuff specifically looking for certain things. Um, I don't know if there's anything more I could say outside of you got to try this Dr. Squatch. It's the best. Let's get back to building the snow fort. You don't climb on a snow for Yeah, see, it's a big jet. Good throw, buddy. How does she get up here so easy? Stuck the landing. Go ahead. We're gonna need more sticks, Noah. Sticks? Yeah. I gotta get more sticks. Longer sticks. Uh, a lot more sticks. The higher up, the drier up. That's what Fowler always says. Let's do sticks. The way. <laughs> I'm gonna get another tree. I'm gonna cut your leg off in your sleep. Get in there. <laughs> She's gunking up. Doesn't pull out so well. Can someone hand me it? Never mind. This is what we used to do as a kid when the sleds didn't go fast enough. You put the Pam on it. Hit it with the sharp edge. Like this? Yeah. All this work's getting me really sweaty. I can't wait to go home and shower with my favorite soap, Dr. Squatch. Link in the description below. All right, clear it out. All right, I think somebody else could join me. Is that the chimney pipe? Yep. How's it going in there? Oh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, just digging a hole. Can you come check it out, Matt? Can I? Yeah, go for it. So this is gonna be the bed. Okay. The chimney, it's keep the old. bed warm, it's heated blankets. And then this is the This bathroom? is the TV area. Golden. I'm working on that wall. A living room? Yeah. It is weirdly like, Warm and quiet. It's so and quiet. quiet. Yeah. We didn't know y'all was out there. 
Yeah, you can't hear even any like the pitter patter of the snow coming down the weekend out there. Is it four o'clock? Snow. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bear. I was just gonna say bears coming in the cave. <laughs> Boys night. Boys oh, night. <laughs> it's nice in here. We're playing Catan in here. Let's fill the table. Yeah. Oh yeah, we need a card table. Okay, like bingo. I think the floor is kind of getting a little high too. I bet there's probably like six inches right here. So close, and I feel I, uh, I can hardly lift the shovel. You want me to dig? You know what we can all use right now? Stop talking. A rip it. <laughs> bro, rip it. Sponsor me, bro. Rip it's are great. I like drinking more than water. I sleep on the thing. Shave off you. about nine inches. He wanted a queen. <laughs> <laughs> One more load. We're done. We're done. We're just leveling up the bed. Leveling up the floor. I think we need some cardboard, maybe. Insulate the bed. Ooh, what's the blue ball? No, uh, United van line, I don't know, somewhere like that. Uh... Should have made an ice table for like putting my, my uh, hot chocolate on. Make one out of plexiglass and it looks like ice. Oh, there we go. So that with the hot chocolate doesn't melt into the <laughs> snow table. There's thinking. I think what I got to do is go, I'm going to have to make a Home Depot run. And uh, then I'm going to bring the heater out here. And uh, and then the air fryer. and Make me some dinner and the TV. Uh, check out the listing linked in below for my new uh, Snowfort Airbnb. It's uh, 250 a night. And uh, it's B Y O uh, B O. Bring your own body odor. Uh, I'll put out a P jug for you. Woo. High fives. That's a lot of work. Ow, I think that hurt my wrist. All the shuffling. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh. Ta-da! Check that out, huh? The uh, rugs I got from Ocean State Job Lot, rugs from Goodwill, got my picnic basket, uh, that little thing you saw me pick up there at Goodwill, I piled up all the blankets. Uh oh, we're getting a drip. Probably should turn the heat off. That might stop the drip. I also have an electric blanket right there. So that big cord is gonna run this, the air fryer, the TV, Xbox. And over here next to the bed, I got a light, um, but instead of wiring it to up over there, I brought my EcoFlow out, and that way I can have my phone charger and have to run more cords around 
And uh, you see me use that in the glamper camper, just the power pack for the EcoFlow and the lights hooked to that too. So it's independent of the other stuff. So should I lose power during a snowstorm in my snow fort, I still have my power pack. And just in case I need a snack, I got some Cheetos right there next to the bed. I have a little bit of a keto, keto, Cheeto, Cheeto. Say that three times fast. It was a keto, Cheetos, Cheetos, because I'm doing the keto diet and I've been back on it. I'm actually down like 14 pounds since the new year. I even picked up at uh, the store a little something for, well, I'm in my fort. I can, like Mr. Rogers, come into my little fort, take off my sweater, and put on my, my jacket. I feel very posh, like I'm wearing my my Russian. It's uh, warm in here. I don't do a very good Russian accent, apparently. My Cheetos right here by the by the bed, and just Tasa, Tasa, Tasa. Oh, I got one. <laughs> look at this. Look at how much room I like. One. I can I can be in here with my kids, and we can watch have movie night. One, two, I could have like six more kids and I'd have plenty of room for them. This is the biggest snow fort I have ever built. And so cozy since the ceiling is still down so low. I better turn off that furnace because it's dripping. All right, so got two switches there and I can leave the furnace lights on so it still looks pretty but it's not putting out heat anymore. Maybe that'll help the ceiling stop dripping. Oh, and I forgot to show you this. Uh, so check this out. Right here, I put in another Harbor Freight moving blanket as the entrance, and I just stitched it on. So I used some big line, and just like a sewing needle stitched up through, and stitched the top edge of this thing on, and so, boom, that locks out and kind of insulates it. I did this on the inside of the shelter, so there's still a five foot corridor going out that way. Let's uh, go over here. Over here we have our entertainment center. I got a nice little uh, sheepskin rug right there in front. The Xbox. <laughs> I bring my snack basket around. Let's see what we got. My guilty pleasures. I do like a monster energy every once in a while. Sugar free ones here. Ooh. <laughs> I feel like a teenager, you know? Like, as a kid, my parents called it my tower of material possessions. I found all these things at garage sales that were like a TV and it was broken and they gave it to me for free and I fixed it. And I had them all stacked up in my bedroom. And I would, and a, and a little refrigerator, so I'd have my little sodas in there. And then I had a little cupboard with my snacks, and then my stereo that I fixed that was free at a garage sale. And then a microwave that I found and I fixed so that I could have a microwave and pop my popcorn and have my soda and, and have a little Nintendo on top of the TV. And, and then a wire that ran across the room, and I'd hold on to that so I could get um, Saturday Night Live uh, when I was a kid and watch it in my bedroom. Back when everything was over the airways, right? Isn't this just the, oh, no, shoes on the bed. That's not cool. There we go. Huh. I love the story. Just always love the story. And the last place you will ever see. Ooh, this is getting the chills. This is so much more immersive than like the game back in the day. I, this is insane. Oh my goodness. Grapple shot? RB, what's an RB? Oh, that's new. Oh yeah, still got it. This is amazing. Like I couldn't even imagine that this would have been possible. Not just the snow fort part, but that I'm playing Halo in a snow fort off of a Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone. 
if I, somebody had told me that I was gonna be doing this as a kid, like I remember playing, you know, Atari when they first came out and like I traded my Michael Jordan cards for a Nintendo. Like, I, I would love to see the kid that I traded those Michael Jordan cards. And I had like a rookie card and I had some Desert Storm cards and I traded all of them just so I could get my hands on a Nintendo. That Nintendo broke down after a period of time and now those Michael Jordan cards are probably worth like $10,000 or something. Maybe if I get a little bit further, then I'll quit. Three hours later. All right, that's enough of that for now. Video games are pretty fun, but everything in moderation, right? The reason I don't do video game sponsorships is that I want you to get the wrong idea. Saying Fowler promotes a video game, I'd rather promote the outdoors and the adventure. That's one of the most important things why we do this channel, so that you see it, you get inspired, you go out and give it a try for yourself. There's so many more real things out there than being sucked into a video game or being sucked into your phone, scrolling through um, some sort of app or a TikTok or things like that. And so uh, it's been a struggle for me when I was a lot younger and I feel like I gave away a lot of my life to beating games and different things that, you know, when it came right down to it, that didn't really add up to anything that I was proud of in the future to share with somebody. But the books that I read, the adventures I took, the time I spent in outdoors, every single one of those as something that stuck with me and I've been able to share with you and I've been able to share with my daughters, I've been able to share with my family and my friends and inspire others and encourage others and build people up and it's it's something real. So I hope you take that away from this whenever you watch the channel that you're not like oh that's ridiculous and he just watching TVs that you see the whole picture and you see the whole picture as part of the adventure and that adventure is inspiring, you know, not necessarily to go out build a snow fort and put all this foolishness in it, but uh, it is gonna be a little bit fun for a while. I'm gonna air fry up some stuff right now and uh, do some cooking and maybe put on a movie and just enjoy myself because we did a lot of hard work to build this. I almost burnt myself out. My muscles are still sore from doing this. Um, so I'm gonna have a good tasty meal. Let's, uh, let's see what we got in the basket here and cook something good up. We got that. Got some healthy Brussels sprouts to balance out the Cheetos. <laughs> we got some of this. This is a spicy honey sent by Bushwick Kitchen. A garlic honey wing in the air fryer and Brussels sprouts. Now that we're in the kitchen, we will prep up our Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. I discovered this like a week ago. It was amazing. There we go. Nice little bowl of Brussels sprouts. That'll balance out my uh, my cheat day with the Cheeto cheat day. A little bit of the old olive oil spray. Um, for the air fryer, I found that that to be like the ultimate. And of course, to season our Brussels sprouts, a little adobo. Oh yeah, that'll make them. So good. That's, and these will taste really good the same way. Just do them up with a little bit of uh, oil spray. And I am going to mix them around with some garlic paste. Instead of prepping up my own garlic, I'm going easy for this whole adventure. And I'm not going to put the honey on until the end. I'm gonna dress them with the honey when they're warm so it melts into it and toss it with the honey and that'll be awesome. And obviously the Brussels sprouts won't take as long to cook so I'll probably, for now, I'll pull those out. And as you saw, that extension cord I bought was buku expensive and super big. Um, I'm not just gonna use that for this video. It'll give me the ability to run bigger tools to build, you know, work bigger tools out in the yard as summer comes along. Let's see if I can't knock down some more bad guys. Time for the Brussels to go in. Move and shoot, move and shoot, don't stop. Don't stop until you drop. Oh geez. We're getting all kinds of dripping. Hopefully the wings finish before uh, 
It doesn't appear to be dripping on the bed before we melt too much. <laughs> we may be pushing the boundaries of what you could put a snow fort through. And I know, I know with the Eskimos, their buildings, you know, they're built up into a nice perfect dome. Probably for this very <laughs> reason, so it doesn't drip on you, right? The drips would kind of work their way around the outside and they'd freeze as they got to the lower part. But they, another thing they did too, I read was they'd have whale bones, which would be like a, a tent rib, right? And then they'd have their hides and they'd put those inside and those would push against the outside of the shell of their um, snow fort igloo, right? And then the hide would be against there and it would insulate this snow from their heat in there. And they would take and make uh, with lard or fat a candle so there'd be a wick and that would cook in, in the liquid fat and they'd hang a piece of blubber above it and as the candle got lower the wick would become longer and when the wick has less fuel on it the flame gets higher it would lick against the lard down would come the lard and it would be melting and it would fill the little tin and the flame would go lower and just a little flame like that in an igloo with a tight space instead of this gloriously you know way too big double queen size bed and all that other stuff it would keep it warm enough in there well got a couple more minutes before the air fryer finishes up hopefully i don't get too wet before the time is done with the cooking let's uh kill some more aliens oh i ripped it off no way oh checkpoint reached phew that was close Brussels are done. Five more minutes on the wings. Ah, uh, there's something I'm missing, like a bazooka. All right, that's good enough. All right, I put on a movie and eat my wings. Ooh, those are ready. Those are ready. Listen to that sizzle. Woo! Oh, fogging up. Wings go in the bowl. Hot, hot. The spicy honey. Get some of that spicy honey all over the garlic toasted wings. Oh, the smells. The smell. And then my Brussels sprouts. I guess I didn't make as many of those as I thought I did. Cool. Oh, okay. The drip's not very cool. Willow, classic, perfect for this. I don't know why it's perfect. There's there's some snow scenes. When I first watched this movie, I think we actually watched this in school, and the teacher gave us a uh, Jolly Rancher lollipops, and I had a peach one. And to this day, when you get something that's so special, like a you know, I've always loved movies, and so making YouTube. It's like so special, like, and you get something that's so memorable to you as a kid. The adventure of Willow, you know, even, so anytime I feel like I'm having high adventure, I actually remember that taste of Peach Jolly Rancher. Maybe it's just me, and maybe that's just a tumor, but, uh, I think it's something that happens to you. You remember that, like, I can still remember the taste of fish head soup from Patagonia, you know, after you know, 70 some odd days before, you know, reaching 87 days, the taste of that every time I drank it and that memory of how rich and strong that flavor, that broth was, how good it was, you know, and just amazing adventure. Like certain things uh, that when they, when they're big moments to you and it burns those flavors or those smells into your mind, or maybe I just have a tumor, but anyways, let's say grace, enjoy our wings. Lord, thank you for this wings. Thank you for this uh, beautiful snow fort, the team that helped me build it, and the opportunities that you put before us to have adventure and see you amazing in those adventures. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's start with Brussels sprouts. They're a little cold because I took them out earlier. I guess I should have known that was gonna happen. And put, put them back in, for, no, still really, really good. I'm not really a huge drumstick person.
Oh my goodness. It's a little bit of spicy, a little bit of sweet. That is amazing. It feels like it's missing a little bit of that, that garlic flavor that I was hoping for. I think too much of it cooked on and around him. And I think next time, um, which is what I normally do, but uh, with minimal supplies and area and surface space, this time I went with putting on the honey on after. What I normally do in my kitchen is I warm up a little pan on low and put the butter and I put the honey in it and I put the garlic in it so the garlic can cook down and I put that all on the wings after they're crispy. And uh, so it, you end up with that garlic uh, honey flavor, both of them equally forward so that they um, explode, it, that flavors explode in your mouth just the right amount like, mmm, wow. Maybe I'll, once I finish my food, I'll tuck myself into bed and finish it from there. I love you. Stop saying that! Leave this to us, it's too dangerous for you. Only one of us should go in there. This is my favorite scene in any movie ever. Right here. I'll kill you. Death next to love is a trivial thing. Something about that scene that I am a hopeless romantic and that and then coupled with when it comes later on right here. Went away. Went away. I dwell in darkness without you and it went away. I just love that movie, that that scene where I dwell in darkness without you and all the sword fighting and, and when they're on the horse there and I dwell in darkness and it just, it went away. Well, yeah, I guess and when he comes to his senses. Ugh. Well, I am super cozy. I am super warm. The heater's been off. I still hear a drip or two here and there, but it feels like it's slowing down. I got one, two, three. I don't know, I got like six or something blankets under me and then the electric blanket on top of me and one other one and I'm so comfortable. I probably could have gotten away with just a down blanket on top. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this first video of the new year. I will uh, see you guys in the next one. I'm gonna go to bed. Fowler. Oh man, snow fork collapsed. Has anybody checked on him? Is he still in there? Is that going to snow I just I just got up and then I went to get a cup of coffee. I think I think this is a story about how coffee saved my life. Huh. Open air snow fort? <laughs> Whole new concept? Snow no fort swimming. jacuzzi? Snow <laughs> fort pool? The TV looks like it's fine. It doesn't have any cracks or bruises. Aiden, okay. Aiden, save the cheese puffs. <laughs> See if they're okay. That's why you keep them in a... Oh, they're okay. Thank God. Oh. I was just messing with you. It's actually been a couple days. I managed to sleep in it with the girls for like three nights. They loved it. They're gonna be more disappointed than I am about this. I think she got it. You need another shovel? I feel like the wildlings climbing up the wall when they storm Castle Black. It's always Game of Thrones with you. Man, I'm so sweaty after all this digging. Could really use a shower with today's sponsor, Dr. Squatch. Link in the description. Did already that joke earlier in the video? <laughs> <box. laughs> Excavating my life. But look, we pulled off the blankets and it didn't really leak all that much. It never really leaked onto the bed except for just the warmth caused it to collapse. So, they don't even know what I'm talking about, Willow. I, so uncultured. <laughs> supposed to be rescuing the baby but he's talking to her and he's telling her he's in love with her and all this stuff she's like what do you mean you you love me profusely and, and then now nothing he's like yeah I got over it kind of that was paraphrasing it was it was much better than that like I 
And that's your favorite scene? <laughs> that's my favorite scene, those two combined together. Where he's like professing his love for her and then... All right, so far, only one fatality. One of my favorite plates. I just got these. Zach's gonna be mad.